Hey, what up guys, GT Game here, and welcome to Memphis, Tennessee. And today we're in a modded airplane, we're in the Airbus A330-300 in uh, this pretty cool FedEx library. Uh, that's why I chose Memphis, because I know that they got a hub here. And today we're flying to Chicago O'Hare International Airport in Illinois, runway 4 right. And uh, yeah, this is a modded airplane, it's really cool, it's free to download. And I will go into more depth uh, about that in a bit. But first, I just wanted to show you this airplane from the outside. It looks pretty cool, got to be honest. Very good modeling. And uh, we're going to do a quick flight. So basic setup, take off, get up to cruising altitude. I'll probably have some nice outside shots, some pretty cool shots. And then we're going to go and land in Chicago. So let's go to the inside view. This is the cockpit. As I said, it is really good modeling in here. It's really cool. The people that made this is uh, Project Mega Pack. I will put a link to them in the description. They also have another free airplane out at the moment. Uh, that is the Airbus A321, which is a really cool airplane. Right, let's set up and take off. And then we'll go into a bit more depth about this airplane. So I'm going to set the barometric pressure automatically to 30.17, you can see there. I'm going to turn on the terrain down here. And let's see what altitude we were assigned. We were assigned 13,000 feet. So I'm going to set that over here in the autopilot. Close that, we don't really need that anymore. A squawk should be automatically set for us. If it's not on your flight, then it's down here to control that. We're going to do the parking brake. Uh, we've done the altitude. I prefer to zoom out a little bit on my map. We're going to set it to 20 nautical miles. And uh, we can adjust that throughout the flight, obviously. And as far as I can remember, I believe that's everything. Um, yep, yeah, distance, barometric pressure. Flaps are... Ooh, we're quite heavy. I'm going to set the flaps a little bit further out like that. And I believe we're ready to go. So let's get set up here. And I guess let's boot it. I'll give you a tip about airbuses in this game. Down here on the uh, throttle lever, you want to set it to CL as high as you can while well, it still says CL. So at the moment it's on auto throttle, it's on CL. And I'm going to keep pressing until it says flex, and then I'm going to go back a little bit to CL. Because if it's too high, the throttle setting, then the air, the autopilot will not use that setting, and it'll be stuck on full throttle basically. We're on runway 18 center at Memphis. This is quite a loud airplane, I will warn you of that. And we are fully low. We're very, very heavy at the moment. What's the wind looking like? Wind is not available yet. 120 knots. I'm thinking because of the weight of this airplane, I probably am going to end up using all of the runway. So there's our V1. Oh, it's starting to pull back now. Wasn't expecting that. I think it did that on its own. Right, 180 flaps up, gear up, and we're just going to hand fly a little bit out of Memphis, and I'm going to reduce the flaps to zero. Right, we're going to begin a left turn here, so I'm going to put it on autopilot, which is over here. You can see that the terrain is kicked in. Set, make sure the altitude is set. Over speed warning. That is one of the bugs. I will talk to you about that in a moment. So yeah, we're going to 13,000 feet. This number here, that's how high we are above the ground. Yeah, I'm not a pilot, um, but I know a decent bit about planes, so I'll talk you through something some features as we go along. This overspeed, as I said, this is a war this is a known bug with the airplane. And it should sort it out now. So yeah, there are 
a few major bugs, but they're not so severe as to ruin your enjoyment, basically. But overall, I would give this model definitely uh, an A+. It's a really good model. Really easy to fly as well, the controls are beautiful on it. We're already at 6,000 feet pretty much, there we go, 6,000 feet. Yeah, so as I said, this aircraft is free, it's a free DLC, they're still working on it, but they've released it now. We're currently on patch 0.2.0. And, as I said, there are some known bugs, and they are trying to iron them out, so hopefully they should all be sorted soon. And, uh, as I said, they've also got the Airbus A321, and I believe there's a few more aircraft that they're going to release, and all of them are free. So, it is really cool. I would recommend checking out Project Meg Megapact on uh, Discord. As I said, I'll link, the link it in the description. Right, we're accelerating up to 320 knots now. Flying on autopilot. And here is beautiful Memphis. I've got the weather set to realistic, the multiplayer set to all live players, so we might see someone else in the sky. And I've got... what's the other options? Yeah, it's, it's realistic weather, that's all you really need to know about. Very steep turn this is. I believe it's about an hour and a half this flight. It shouldn't be too long. But we should be able to get up to our cruise now to 39,000 feet. Nope. We've got some traffic behind us there. <laughs> Half the traffic, even though it's behind you, you can't see it. So yeah, let's talk about this model a little bit. It uses the same kind of cockpit as all the Airbus uh, airplanes, like the Airbus A320, A321. Um, there are no massive differences that I've spotted. But there are, as I said, there's a few bugs with it. So firstly, and there's two that are kind of linked. Flight level 240. And I personally would describe them as the most severe bugs. So the first one is the speed brakes, which are down here on the Airbus A330, this lever here. And I'm going to do whatever I can to avoid using them in this flight for the simple reason that they are broken. So you can extend them as much as you want, but you can only retract them to 50%. And I found that out the hard way when another bug kicked in. So, when the aircraft is below a certain altitude, I believe it's about 2,000 feet, the autopilot seems to think that the, the speed you want for touchdown is 476 knots, which is obviously way too high. So, those are the two main bugs, and the way they will affect your flight is if you don't take over control manually, as you come in on the final approach, the aircraft will suddenly start accelerating. And if you don't catch it quickly, then it will keep accelerating. And when you do catch it, you'll be going way too fast to make the landing. And the problem is, you can't pull the speed brakes to slow yourself down, or at least if you do, then you're probably um, not going to be able to retract them. I believe, as I said, they are working on both of them. Uh, a few other minor bugs that are not really too severe is apparently the rubber on the side stick here is the wrong colour. It should be blue. I don't know that for sure. I'm taking that off their official release uh, notes. So apparently this little side stick here should be uh, blue. I'll take their word for that. I don't know. I've never flown an Airbus A330 in real life because I'm not a pilot. Uh, secondly is the icing effects. There's no icing on the outside, even when it's really cold. And it doesn't wing flex. You can see it's quite a solid model. Um, apparently the rudder is too sensitive, which, to be fair, I can see that. That does seem a bit oversensitive for this size of aircraft. 
Oh my god, we're at 20,000 fuel rate. This is a powerful aircraft. It can go as high as uh, 41,000 feet, so it is very fast, powerful aircraft. It's kind of a long range aircraft, it's designed to go overseas and stuff. And the only other bug. Uh, have, have they said they fixed that? Let me just check the notes quickly. No, that hasn't been fixed yet. So the. Oh, yep, yeah, yeah, they have fixed it. In the original patch, 0 0.1.0, uh, the windscreen was quite blurry. Um, I personally can't see that, but then I am flying patch 2. But I did have patch 1, and I couldn't, didn't notice anything too severe about that. But yeah, those are the known bugs. As I said, the main ones to worry about are the speed and the uh, speed brakes. Apparently also the reverses have an issue, but I personally have not encountered that. I need to reset my barometric pressure to 29.92 standard atmospheric pressure. Oh. Uh, you see the speedo here is doing that. That is because, as I said, there's no ice in effect, but it does still affect the plane. So I'm going to go through all the cameras here and I'm going to go to anti-ice, which is up here. I'm going to turn on wing, probe, engine 1, and engine 2. And that should... Yep, yeah, that's fixed it. We are going a little bit fast now, however. We're about to hit 24,000 feet. So, let's see what altitude it gives us next. FedEx 25, heavy climb, and maintain flight level 320. 320. As I said, we're approaching 39,000 feet. There is another bug which has affected this aircraft, but it's not exclusive to this aircraft. It's a bug in the game. And that bug is... Um, basically, in jets particularly, such as the Airbus or the Boeing 787, it will have a tendency to randomly go, hmm, I'm going to fly in a circle. So it'll go along and it will just suddenly start turning quite steeply into a bank. And the workaround for that that I found, and I've also seen other people online use it, is if you go into your settings and set your controller or whatever you're using to fly, contact Memphis. Uh, with a dead zone of a, between sort of 3 and 5%. It won't affect your flight, but it should stop it doing that. Because basically if the game detects even a slight bit, either way, uh, say your controller's not, joystick is not perfectly vertical, it will detect that as a turn, and it will randomly start turning. Talking of turning, we're about to enter quite a steep bank here. As we enter the clouds as well. Twenty-seven thousand feet already. I'm running this game in 1080p, um, as I run pretty much all my games nowadays. Uh, I changed my monitor recently. I did have a 4K one, but I just kept having issues with it, so I've swapped to three 1080p monitors. Got a full surround sound experience. Um, I'm playing on an i9-10850K that's been overclocked. 32 gigs of 3200 Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM. And an RTX 2080 Super. So, and I get, I get, depending on where I am, generally about 30 to 40 frames a second. You can see in the top right I'm getting about 35 now. Uh, on landing, it will spike down to, I've seen it go as low as 7. Um, but it generally doesn't stay that low, it's just spikes here and there. But then, as I, equally, I am running it with full um, settings, full traffic, and the alias in, all of that. If you have problems running this game, you might want to lower some of those settings. But honestly, for a flight simulator, or a simulator in general, I would say that 30 frames a second on the inside, 40 on the outside is perfectly fine. It looks perfectly smooth to me. Three, two, 
320 knots. This... <laughs> the reason I chose 39,000 feet instead of 41 is because when I'm flying other planes, such as, for example, the 787, I seem to get this issue where if it's heavy, it won't hit cruising altitude properly, so I usually have to go two, 3,000 feet below. But honestly, this plane... This plane's doing fine, i got to be honest. Like, where are we? How far have we flown, roughly? So yeah, that's... That's really good performance. We're already at 32,000 feet. There are a lot of planes that won't even hit 39,000 feet when they're loaded this heavy. I literally maxed out the weight thing. We can see that here. So, yeah, it's gone down a little bit for some reason, but it was on 100%. If you leave the fuel on 50% and max out the weight, unless your center of gravity is out, I missed what I said then. Ah, oh, Cessna. Yeah, unless your center of gravity is out, it, the max weight plus 50% fuel will be exactly the takeoff weight. 390. FedEx 252 heavy. We're sort of at the cloud level now. So the clouds are at about 32,000 feet over here. Other than that, though, other than the clouds, it seems like a lovely day, i got to be honest. Which, after the wind we've had, is uh, good to hear. It's very hot outside. It jumped uh, today where I live in uh, in the UK. I woke up at 6 o'clock this morning. It was 2 degrees outside. And now it's like 13, 14 degrees. And honestly, it feels like a summer day. Like, even though 13 degrees isn't hot, that much of a difference in such a short, like, what was it, four or five hour window? It certainly feels hot. Not really sure, I'm gonna check the route here. How long we're gonna stay at 39,000 feet for. So let's say we hit 39,000 feet, I'm gonna zoom the map out there. Uh, about here. It'll probably start descending us between foots and groove. Was that the? Oh no! I thought it was telling. Excuse me, telling me off then. I think we should enjoy some nice outside scenery since we don't really have to do anything inside at the moment. You can still see all the uh, fields and stuff below, so it's not thick cloud. It's not stormy or anything like that. It's just a normal cloudy, hot summer day. I am just looking across now. Um, I have had frame rate issues recently. Uh, basically, it's hard to explain, but my old graphics card was a 1080 Ti which is a really good card, but, well, yeah, it was a really good card. It was good for recording, and you could set limits on it and stuff with the firmware, because it was a 10 series, but with the new RTX cards, they don't really have an, an upper core speed. They speed themselves up until they get too hot, and then they cool themselves down. And the problem I'm having is when they boost, they also go up in load, and when the load hits above like 95%, it interrupts my encoder, which is the thing I use to make the videos, and that causes low frame rate, so I'm still trying to solve that issue. I do kind of miss my 1080 Ti. I had to get rid of it though. Um, basically, it was a blower style card, and my old case didn't have the best cooling. So, it was running very hot, and because I'm a know-it-all, I one day turned around and said to my brother, Ah, oh, we both like computers, let's see how high we can overclock our computers. And I went too far and basically caused it damage from heat. It still worked fine, but every now and again it would artifact. 
and uh, it was just it was getting worse and worse so I sold it on marketplace for 250 quid and uh, used part of that money to buy my new card which is a 2080 super yeah I am still trying to work around that frame rate issue oh my god we're at 39,000 feet already I do like the FedEx logo. Have you ever noticed the hidden meaning? If you look really closely, the arrow between the E and the X there, according to the CEO, it represents moving forward with the times. That's my fun little fact for you there. Right. I think I'm going to get some nice outside shots and we're going to continue our flight towards Chicago. So I'll bring you back in what will, for me, be probably about an hour, maybe a bit less. And for you, will be about two minutes after some uh, nice outside shots. Alright, welcome back guys. Uh, we're just about to hit flight level 250, 25,000 feet. And we're descending into Chicago. We're about 70 miles away. Which, honestly, in this plane's not that far. And we'll probably experience that bug with the flight speed. So I'm going to keep my eye open for that. And hopefully I'll catch it. And if and when I do... I'll show you how to combat that as well. I'm pretty sure it was flight level 250. Yeah. 17,000 17, feet. We're hitting some turbulence. The weather has changed a little bit. It's not so sunny anymore. We're at 320 knots and we're about 60 miles out now. We're going to come in on an ILS approach for runway 4 right. Um, I don't believe, no, that won't take us over the main part of the city, but it'll take us over sort of the outskirts and the uh, residential part of Chicago. We're just about at the cloud line now, but the clouds did, uh, I got a feeling they'll look a little bit darker as we descend. Eleven thousand feet. Just remember, I can't deploy the speed brakes. If I do, which obviously I can, we're gonna have to land with them on, which is not really what I want. Yeah, on a normal plane, say the Airbus A320 in flight sim, the autopilot sees when the flaps is out and adjusts the speed. We're going to have to do that manually. We are flying over Cody Port, RLA Regional. I think RLA is regional. It's funny because we look so close to the clouds, but we're probably still a few thousand feet above them. Decimal zero seven flight 
clouds are just massive fair play. Chicago Center FedEx 252 Heavy is out of flight level 210 for 11,000 feet. Alright, I'm gonna stay mainly cockpit view from now on. Just so I can monitor the instruments. I, I'm not sure which altitude the speed bug kicks in. I think it's about 5,000 feet, but it might be slightly higher than that. It could be 10,000 feet. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what caused it, but as I said, they, um, Project Megapack, the people that make this plane, which is uh, a community rather than a single person or a team or a developer, they are working on it. Uh, but apparently it's quite a difficult thing to sort out. I think we're about to kiss this cloud and then uh, might end up getting a bit dark in the cockpit. As long as we don't get a uh, an alarm that sounds like too low terrain, that's all that really matters. Yeah, about 17, 18,000 feet, that's where the clouds are starting to kick in. I have no idea what the weather's like in Chicago, it could be raining for all I know. I have no idea. But it seems a little stormy from up here. But yeah, if you're prepared to uh, put up with the bugs, I would highly recommend this airplane. I mean, for a free plane, you can't go wrong. As I said, if it takes your fancy as well, there's also the Airbus A321, which is um, similar to the A320, but it's got different engines, different seating capacity. I think it's slightly bigger, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's certainly louder, I'll tell you that much. But it is a really cool airplane for sort of regional European hops. Uh, it does come with liveries. There is a livery pack for each of the planes they've released. Oh, no, cloud not that bad actually. But yeah, there are liveries. Um, the A321 has a decent livery pack. This has about 10 to 15 liveries. And then there's the... I'm going to change my atmospheric pressure. And then there's the... Um, Oh, I think the speed's kicking in. It has. Yeah, Project Megapack, they do a lot of um, liveries and stuff. The A320 livery pack they've done is very extensive. I'm going to slow down to about 200 knots. Oh, my frame rate's gone very low all of a sudden. I think it's slowed in Chicago as we speak. Right, I managed to get it back. Um, not sure what that lag spike was about, but that was probably the most severe I've ever seen. But basically during that, as I struggled with the controls and the settings, I set the the airspeed to 200 knots, which I think is a good approach speed. It's not too fast and it's also not too slow. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> expedite your descent. It's not going to descend fully until I've bled off that airspeed. The problem is, unlike a real pilot, 5,000 feet. I can't deploy my speed brakes. I will if I need to, as I said, but I'm really trying to avoid it right now. We're about 20 miles away, so yeah, it's touch and go. I think we should be able to bleed that speed off, just using air resistance and low engine speed. Is that the airport there? Oh, if that is the airport, yeah, because there's Chicago Midway over there. Uh, I might have to deploy the speed brakes. I really don't want to do that. Flaps. I'll deploy the flaps. I'm a bit fast for it, but 
it will increase drag. Obviously in a real plane you wouldn't want to do this, but don't really have much choice right now. Right, it's bleeding off speed nicely. In fact, we're looking a bit high. And my game just crashed. You have got to be kidding me. Right, okay guys, we're turning into the final approach now. Uh, I had to reload this flight, so it's a slightly different flight plan. Um, basically, my game crashed, and yeah, it wasn't good. So I reflew it with a slightly different flight plan. And we're just turning now towards the approach into Chicago O'Hare. We're at 11,000 feet, and you can see that I've manually set the speed to 285 knots. And, as I said, I've been having some really bad lag spikes. I'm not entirely sure what that's about. Uh, I'm hoping that improves. It Last time it lasted about 5 seconds. Um, and then there was a more severe one that lasted 15... Well, no, probably about 30 seconds. I think this is that one now. Uh, and then we'll be approaching the runway 4 right, and we're going to come in for an ILS approach. As I said, we're at 11,000 feet right now. And I've set the speed to 285, 285 knots in order to avoid that speed bug. And I'm just hoping that the frame rate will pick up because this is not enjoyable right now. Just give it a second. And just like that, it's over. Honestly, I'm not sure why it is. I've tried this approach three times now because my game crashed uh, twice. And this seems to be a band around Chicago that just makes the game freeze up like that. I d honestly, I don't know what that is. Either way though, I am going to lower the speed. About 200 knots seems okay. Uh, I'm bleeding off the speed quite early because I know that we haven't got air brakes. So slowing down towards the end is a very risky strategy. Um, it... Is it, what altitude's it giving us? I swear it is 11,000 feet. Um, yeah, 11,000 feet was the last altitude it gave us, so hopefully it should tell us to descend at any moment. Right, we're just getting onto the uh, approach path now. Ooh, we do seem quite high. I don't know, I think something might be bugged about this flight, honestly. I really want to start descending now. Right, I'm going to go flaps one to increase the drag. And uh, I'm really hoping that it tells us to, send, to descend any moment. Honestly... I might just... yeah, I'm going to start doing the descent now. Air traffic... I got... I just... I think this game's bugged, honestly. As I said, I've tried this flight a few times now and it just does not want to work for me. So I'm going to descend to flight level 050, 5000 feet. I'm going to increase the flaps again. And I'm going to lower our speed to approximately 180 knots. Yeah, we're getting a bit of an overspeed warning now, that's fine. Obviously, this is not how you'd fly a real Airbus A330, but it just... it doesn't want to seem to work for me today. I'm doing my best, I don't want the video to end halfway through with me going, Oh, well, game crashed, let's leave it here then. I want an actual video out of this. You can see over here, there, it's been massive, fair play, and that's the runway we're going to. Runway 4 right. Still going quite fast, but that's fine because we're getting our descent in early. In fact, I'm going to go an extra thing of not of uh, flaps, and I'm going to descend once again to 160 knots. There are four Over flap speed. settings, and well, Over five speed. if you include uh, no flaps at all. We're right on the verge of speeding right now. 
I'm thinking a good landing speed, full flaps, would be about 145 knots. I'll deploy them when we hit about four, eh, let's go four, five thousand feet. And then I'll put the gear out at about four. While we're waiting, uh, I'm going to zoom out see how far out we are. We're about 15 miles. Uh, I'm going to set the brakes to... We're quite heavy. I'm going to go medium on them. Parking brake is off. Right, that's perfect. Terrain is on. Altimeter is set. Not exactly following the correct checklist at the moment, but, you know... It's an unusual day. It's an unusual flight. 6,000 feet. We seem pretty lined up with the runway. Wind is 215 at 19 knots at the moment. So the wind's pretty much behind us. That's good. Right, let's start a level out. I'm going to go down to 4,000. And I'm going to deploy that extra flaps I was on about. We're going to go approach mode armed. And I'm hoping they'll intersect the ILS any second. I'm going to reduce our speed to about 145 knots, as I said. Engage that. And when we hit about 4,000 feet, I'm going to lower the gear. Ooh, I think it may have caught the glide path. Uh, it's honestly hard to tell. I think it has. No, not sure it has. Okay, I'm going to go down to 3,000 feet then. If anything, I'd rather be below the glide path than above it, because the brake issue for starting. If I'm below, then it'll be a lot easier for me to intersect it than to drop down into it. Ooh. I don't know, we feel high. This feels really high to me. I don't think we're going to make this. Try putting the gear down. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to dive down into the glide path. I know this is not correct flying procedure, but this is how I'm going to do it. This is really not the correct way to fly an Airbus. I'm going to set 2,000 feet. Do you know what? We're just going to manually land it. Screw it. I give up. I absolutely give up. <laughs> right. We are a little bit high, a little bit uh, steep descent at the moment. I'm going to go dashboard cam, just so I can see. Yeah, we're way too high. And again, the frame stutters again. Not a good time. Do you know what, at this point, even if I nosedive into the runway, I'm going to count that as a, as a success. We want two red, two white on the pappy. There's a red. I'm going to pull back a little bit. This frame rate is really starting to get on my nerves. I'm pulling back. <laughs> Come on, plane. Just respond. This is the most frustrating flight ever. Now we're too low. Oh, please, please, just let me land. Right. We are too low still. I'm just going to reduce the throttle now. Got alarms going off. This is not a great landing. 200 feet. 
160. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Come on. I'm going to count that. <laughs> that was an amazing landing. I'm going to count it. That was... Uh, oh, my God. Gonna turn the auto brake off now. That was ridiculous. Yeah, I will. I'm not even gonna look for a gate, honestly. This is. Oh my god, that was. That was stressful, guys. Not gonna lie to you. That was really freaking stressful. It only took four approaches. <laughs> or three. I don't know, I lost count. Oh man. And now I'm going a bit fast. See that blue plane there? We're gonna go park right next to that guy. Yeah, we're going to go park next to whatever airplane that is. Because I can't be arsed anymore. This is not rage quit, just rage lack of enthusiasm, whatever the word for that is. I'm crossing this runway and no one's going to stop me. Because that's just how I roll. I'm probably fired, ain't I? I got a feeling that the uh, bosses of FedEx might have something to say to me. Is that an A380? That blue plane? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an A380. Show me the power. Yeah, I'm gonna go put an S the A380. If I can get my throttle under control. You know what? Screw it. This'll do. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Guys, uh, my mood certainly changed halfway through this video, didn't it? I, in case it's not obvious, I got a bit fed up there at the end. I, I, I don't know what it is. Chicago has never been good luck for me. I've always seemed to have trouble with the approaches, so I'm just never ever going to fly into Chicago ever again. But yeah, that was something special. But, here we are, we've landed, I'm fired. And, uh, as I said guys, the, the link to this plane it is an awesome plane, I would recommend it, is in the description, as well as the Airbus A321, it's at the same link and uh, make sure you check them out thank you so much for watching and just sticking with me i'll see you next time peace out guys